Welcome back to the Ricky Matthews Show from the Citizens Bank Studio. I really enjoyed that conversation with Jeff. We're so lucky to have access to him every week. And the conversation we had about the Superdome and Dave Dixon's vision back in the day to create this dome structure in the middle of New Orleans that, uh, at a time when New Orleans needed really, really serious help. It is uh, it's amazing how it all played out and what it means to, to Mississippi, the Superdome and the Saints and the Pelicans and all these incredible events that are there. Uh, a lot of the people who come to the Sugar Bowl and the Super Bowl and all of them uh, stay in coastal Mississippi. And the relationship between this region, the Gulf South region, and things like the Superdome, undeniable. And as they work their way toward the Superdome, uh, excuse me, the Super Bowl, it's going to be great watching the city come together and address some of the concerns that they have. Okay, so without any further ado, let's move over to my next guest, my friend Richard Cross. He's a host of Sports Talk Mississippi. He sits in for Paul Gallo and others for, at, from time to time. He's really good at it. We'll talk about that before we get done or with our conversation. But Richard, how you doing, my friend? Ricky, always good to see you. Thanks for uh, thanks for the invitation to join you. Yeah, it's always it's always good to spend time with you. Hey, Kyle and I were talking on uh, one of our shows recently about the the evolution of, uh, of of Super Talk from a technological point of view. But what we've seen happen just in the last two years, video, you being able to do your show from your house, I'm sitting in my house, um, you know, Super Talk TV and social media and an incredibly, uh, really, really popular uh, podcast for, for Southern Miss State and Ole Miss. Man, we've made a major evolution. And there, there I see you sitting in your in your uh, study at your house and me sitting in, in my fishing closet, which is what I call my studio. Um, man, it's it's awesome to be able to do the shows this way, isn't it? Yeah, this is this is my favorite spot. And it's not actually in the house. So it's funny you say your, your fishing closet. The people that own this house before, this was like a, a fish cleaning shed slash garden shed for the uh, the wife of the lady and uh, when, when we bought this, it was stud walls with decaying insulation and whatever else. And so, uh, no, it's a fun spot. And yeah, I, I just, you know, if you're sitting still, then you're, you're moving backwards. And um, the combination of, of Steve Davenport and Kim Dillon and uh, Will East and some others who have been involved with some of the, uh, the technical or technological advancements that we've had over the last few years, have been good. And, you know, it's not just that we've, we've thrown something out there. It's a, uh, it, it looks good. It sounds good. It, it's streamlined. And um, none of it matters though, if people don't listen, right? I mean, you can, you can invest whatever you want, but if, if people don't follow through, then it doesn't make the investment worthwhile. And so we're incredibly thankful to the people across the state of Mississippi and frankly, beyond the borders of Mississippi who, um, you know, podcast or on demand uh, is the way that, that they can connect with us, the way that they can uh, can listen and be a part of our shows. And so uh, it's fun. I, I have I wish I had a crystal ball where I could look into the future and know what's next. But uh, I'm, I'm thankful for where we are. And uh, we've come a long way in a short amount of time, too. I, I don't want to say that we were late adopters, but before you invest in you know basically a, a second and third line of business you want to be sure that it's a wise investment and so kind of took our time and, and did it well and we probably had some growing pains along the way and have had some stumbles along the way but it's uh it, it's been good progress yeah that's part of the learning process i think i think the most important strategic decision that steve made was that i am not going to allow super talk to get sucked up into some national conglomerate i'm going to stay focused on local I, I saw it in in the way that we had conversations about me doing this show, um, this commitment to local, and the fact that they have you know the sports talk effort and all the other stuff that they've done across uh, all these different uh, programs is a real focus on Mississippi and. And then once you you know you've got the content, then you can begin to think about how to how to roll that content out in a multimedia sort of way. So, I think uh, I think as long as you have content that people that's relevant to people, it's going to make a difference. And your point about the World Wide Web and podcasts and and, and how they can touch anybody. I, when I, I had a, a conversation with um, Brad from Three Doors Down and. I heard from a young woman from Russia, for example. You know, you just wow. you just you just don't you just don't know who you're going to touch. And of course, you can see the metrics. You can go in and literally see the metrics and see what countries 
are listening to your show. And presumably I'm thinking that people from Mississippi have moved to Australia and moved to Europe and, and your know, way they con- connect is they come to our shows to, to see what's going on. And I, well, I, I love well, thunder and lightning. So Brian Haydad's podcast with, um, with Robbie Falk, that's the, the Mississippi state podcast. Uh, it's the number one sports podcast in Nepal. So yeah. <laughs> I don't know what the connection is there, but uh, you know, folks are, uh, are getting ready for a big mountain climb. And they've got their earbuds in listening to uh, to Mississippi State news. Well, it's it's truly it's truly truly remarkable. The Rebel Report that Michael Borky's got, and you know you get you you participate in all these from time to time, and of course you've got the Eagle Report as well. But you know the the, the, the content is there because you guys can talk about it. Let's 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 look back on this week. You've got a baseball starts out, and uh, Mississippi State and Ole Miss right off the bat. Uh, didn't start out so so good. So, what's your read on on how how getting started that way bodes for Mississippi State and Ole Miss? It's been a rocky start. There's no question. Uh, let's start with Mississippi State. They were at home to begin the season. Had Air Force in. Um, you know, I, I don't think losing that second game of the series to Air Force is that big of a deal. Um, you'd like to win that game, but they played better. And Mississippi State really pitched it well over the course of the weekend. But when you follow up a two and one opening weekend with a couple of midweek losses to Austin P, where they they kind of found two different ways to lose games, uh, it makes it tough, right? I mean they um, they did not swing the bats well at all on uh, on Tuesday and lost a three to two game, uh, and then had an eight four lead late on Wednesday um, and had just been gifted. I, I think six of their first eight runs in that game came via bases loaded walks by Austin P pitching. So they were given a lot in that game. And then they couldn't they couldn't throw strikes and they couldn't get outs in the, the late innings of that game. So Austin P won both of those midweek games. Um, to say that Mississippi State fans are disgruntled, I think would be an understatement because you're talking about national championship in 2021. 22 was a disappointment. 23 was a massive disappointment and not a great start to this 24 season. Little bit different scenario with Ole Miss. They travel 5,000 miles to Hawaii. They win the first two games. First game of the season, a 13-inning game that ended at 3.31 a.m. Central time. And, yes, I made it to the end. Uh, Then they won the first game of a doubleheader on Saturday, but then lost the next two. And the frustrating part about the two losses in Hawaii, they didn't play well in those games. They they kicked it around on the infield. They had trouble throwing strikes, a, a lot of giveaway stuff, and didn't make great defensive plays. It was a recipe for losing, especially that far from home. And then they come back home and just really struggled offensively on Wednesday against Arkansas State. So, yeah, listening to Mike Bianco talk about um, the way this season has begun, he's disappointed. He still believes that this team's got a chance to be better. They've shown some good things on the mound, um, especially out of the bullpen. But offensively, it has been an absolute struggle for Ole Miss. The good news, if you're looking for any, is that Southern Miss is off to a good start this year. Um, you know, they, uh, they get it done on the opening weekend. They, they uh, in Christian Ostrander's debut, they win three of their first four and then go to UNO and get a win in the midweek as well. So good start for the Golden Eagles. And, uh, and, and Nico Mazzo got the uh, Sunbelt Pitcher of the yeah. Week. So that's, that's, really, that's good. really good to see. On the basketball side of the court, we had a, 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 a a really good game between Mississippi State and Ole Miss that has ramifications, doesn't it? Hey, a huge ramifications, and it was a different type game than the first time around. The, the first half on Wednesday night looked a lot like the first game. The pace was up and down the floor. Both teams made a lot of shots. You, you had some defensive stops, but it wasn't um, it wasn't a rock fight, if you will. The second half looked more like a rock fight, like a you know rough and tumble. Um, Wednesday night after the game, I tweeted a couple of things that that stood out to me. Number one, Mississippi State was elite defensively. Uh, They did a really, really good job. Ole Miss did not make shots in the second half. Um, Ole Miss struggles defensively. They struggle rebounding the basketball. And if you don't make shots, uh, you got a problem. And and so when they didn't make shots, especially from the perimeter, uh, it was a problem. Cam Matthews, number four for Mississippi State, that is a grown man. He is a beast, and he's playing the best that he has ever played. It was a good win for Mississippi State. There's no way to describe uh, describe it other than that. And it was a hard loss for Ole Miss, but it wasn't necessarily a debilitating loss. They've got five games left in the regular season. They play Missouri on the road. They play Georgia on the road. Uh, they've got Texas A&M. 
and uh, Alabama and South Carolina at home. Probably going to have to win three of those uh, to have a chance to be in the NCAA tournament. Last night, Joe, or Wednesday night, Joe Lenardi moved Ole Miss out of the field of 68. So they're in that first four out group. They've got it in front of them, Ricky. They can, they can play well and win themselves into the tournament. Or if they don't, they're going to be sweating it out and hoping that other people lose, which is not the spot you want to be in. It's definitely not the spot you want to be in. Listen, uh, you guys, your sports talk team does an incredible job. And uh, I, I can understand why it's so popular because people, you know, get this wonderful sort of uh, – rousting between the between the the uh, the three of y'all and it's fun to watch you it's fun to listen you're very aware but when we come back on the other side I want to actually talk about when you sit in Paul Gallo's chair and what is that like to do that when we get back we'll continue our conversation with Richard Cross Welcome back to the Ricky Matthews Show from the Citizens Bank Studio. I have my friend Richard Cross who's a host of Sports Talk Mississippi but he also sits in for some of the other programming we have, like the Paul Gallo show. And, you know, one of the things, Richard, that when people ask me why in in my retirement do I do this, I say that I enjoy – what I get from it personally is the opportunity to learn and connect, okay? But at the same time, I'm really, really interested in being able to make a difference. I don't – you know, that's one of the things about being a publisher that was – that really – inspired me, the fact that we could rally the team around issues of public concern and, and make change happen and create public debates and do things that will push democracy forward so that people are engaged in the democratic process. I especially saw that after Hurricane Katrina when we had to make so many different decisions about what we wanted to be as these communities rebuilt. That's so I've enjoyed that. I mean, you, you made a point a few minutes ago, you know, we can have all this great program, but if no one's listening, it won't matter. At the end of the day, it's, it's incredible that we've built this strategic company that's geographically located and um, that you know, have these, these stations that are geographically located so we can touch the entire state of Mississippi. So it's fun when you're having sports talk, but it's important when you're sitting in for Paul Gallo. And you, you sense that, don't you? Yeah, I think so. Um, and I think that's a credit to Paul and the, uh, the job that he's done over uh, an extended period of time. You know, there, there's a thought in the radio world that being good really matters, right? I mean, you, you need to be good. But the thing that I think sets people apart in radio is longevity. Um, and if you're going to be on the radio for a really long time in one place, uh, especially in a place like, like Super Talk Mississippi, you, you've got to be good. And you've got to be entertaining, but to be able to do it for a couple of decades plus, uh, to me, really speaks to the uh, the job that Paul has done. Um, I think he is trusted by most Mississippians. There are obviously people who don't agree with him politically or the way he presents things, and those people don't care one way or the other. Uh, but I think Paul's audience trusts him, and I think for the most part, the the legislators and the majority of his guests uh, trust him. And Paul wants to see what's good for Mississippi. And so he has created that platform um, through his tenure. And so, yeah, it does feel like there's a, a big responsibility. I, candidly, I have to work a lot harder to get ready to fill in for that show because I'm not in that world on a day-to-day -day basis. I keep up with what's going on. I've always loved news. I've always been kind of a closet political junkie. But to be able to... Um, have those conversations with elected officials or appointed officials and to not be a moron when, when you're doing it, to be able to have opinions that are well thought out and make sense, to be able to have legitimate conversations, it takes a lot of work. Or, or at least for me to feel good about doing that, I feel like I have to invest a pretty fair amount of time to get ready for those shows. Whereas on the sports side of things, it's cumulative, right? I mean, it's, it's a lifetime and it's constantly watching games and going to events and talking to people and being plugged in. It's just a, a little bit different world. So it's a challenge, uh, but it's one that I've enjoyed and it's one that uh, I'm thankful that um, I've been given the opportunity to do a few times. It's always fun. Hey, listen, I congratulate you. Uh, obviously, I get um, well the, the, the uh, issue of preparation. you got to... You got to 
you got to do your homework. And one of the commitments I made when I came to this show was I'm never going to I'm never going to try to take any shortcuts. You know, I'm not every guest deserves the opportunity actually to have a great conversation, but every guest deserves me doing my homework about the conversation that we're going to have so we can so we can do the best we can well, to uh, to give them the opportunity to shine. And you cannot fake that, Richard. You know that. Maybe you and I've talked about that before, but you try to fake that the listeners will pick up on it so fast that it'll make your head spin. And so it's okay to say you don't know something. It's okay to explore an area that you may not know a lot about with a guest because you knew in your homework that this is a subject that, that I'm not familiar enough with. And I, there's no amount of homework that's going to prepare you for the expertise that you're about to have on the air. But authenticity is so important. You do a great job at that. And you are knowledgeable. You're certainly more knowledgeable than, than you give credit for. And on the issue of Medicaid expansion specifically, because it's a politically tough discussion, we've got a lieutenant governor and a speaker that wants to have these conversations. You know, I, I thought the way you had that those conversations when you recently sat in for Paul was, was important. And I could tell you'd done your homework. And, um, you know, you don't take that lightly, do you? No. And I don't know that I know the answer on that issue. I know it's it's a complicated issue. Um, I know that, that we've got a problem with health care in Mississippi, uh, especially in, in rural settings with the, the stories about the hospitals that are struggling to keep their doors open. And I know we've got a lot of people that are, are sick that don't necessarily have the insurance coverage that they need. And so that's that's a piece of it. But then the other piece of it is you know, for those who are fortunate to be able to afford health insurance, you're paying out of your, uh, just, it's like nonstop. And there's a frustration that goes along with that. There are a lot of questions that have got to be asked. Um, yeah. And I thought, I, you know, just, yeah, just I in term, yeah, just in terms of the process on the air that you managed, I thought it was fair and exploring. And that's what okay. we need to do. That's what we need to be able to do. Richard Cross, you are... You are a star, my friends. Always great to catch up with you. Good to catch you up. Thanks, Ricky. Have a great weekend. You bet. This has been Richard Cross. Listen, have a great weekend, and we will see you on Monday. <laughs>